there's a bazillion economic reports that come out every month, and I have a few that I like to kind of follow. And there's one that it's called the JOLTS report, and this is a Department of Labor report. And JOLTS stands for Job Openings and Labor Turnover Survey. Okay? And uh, I've always been impressed by this number because, it, it, for instance, we just last week got the JOLTS report out for, I think it was for the, the month of April. And it showed that at the end of April, there were 5.4 million jobs available in the United States. Nearly 5.5 million jobs available. Are they all great jobs? <laughs> no, of course not. Of course not. But they're jobs. Okay, they're jobs. It's as simple as that. Uh, that worked out to, to one job for every 1.6 people that are looking for work. Go back about six years ago. The ratio was one job for every eight people looking for work. We've come a long, long way. Okay? And um, there's another component in the report that uh, calculates the number of people that quit their job voluntarily in the past month. In April, 2.7 million people quit their jobs. Now, why in the world would you quit a job? Because you already got another job to go to, and it's probably a better job that pays more and has better benefits, better health coverage, and everything. 2.7 million people said, uh, boss, I got to talk to you for a moment, and, uh, and quit their jobs. And that's a pretty powerful, powerful number. That's the highest the number has, has ever been. It's never been that high before. So, you know, a lot of people, uh, think that jobs numbers are made up, you, and, that, and, and I suppose that could be the case with some things, but this is not a made-up number. These are, these are real, legitimate numbers that, uh, that you can see uh, are, are a very positive sign for the economy. A uh, number I saw this morning uh, talking about, and I, I won't get into housing too much, yeah, maybe I will get into housing and see how I feel in a little while, um, but it talked about the fact that there are hardly any foreclosures anymore. We have completely, almost completely recovered from the housing mess that we had about seven or eight years ago. Um, and it was, uh, it, was, it was genuinely ugly. You know, at the time, I, did not, I didn't see it coming. I, I really didn't see it coming. I believed that things were being done. I mean, Alan Greenspan you know, was telling people, get out there and buy a, ho a house. Get out there and buy a house. The, the president was telling people to buy a house. Um, the, the, it, all, these, all these powerful people in Washington, D.C., were buy a house, okay? And back then, you know, it was very easy to buy a house. They called them pen and pulse loans. If you had a pulse and a pen, you could buy a house. That's all it took, okay? Nothing more than that. They didn't want to see any proof of income. They didn't want to see what assets you own or anything. Just walk in and sign on the line. You know, tell them whatever you want your income is, and, and you were able to do it. Today, it's a much different world. Uh, today, uh, if you want to get a loan, uh, banks require and credit unions require you to do something rather extreme and severe. Uh, show them some evidence that you might be able to pay the darn thing off. Okay? That's a, I mean, I know that's asking a lot, and maybe they're going over the, over the limit here. I don't know, but that's what they're doing now. You have to so the loans that we're making now are, are wonderful loans that are safe and secure, and, uh, and housing Prices have come up, obviously, dramatically, and we can get to that a little bit. The other thing, I, I, I will talk about housing right now, and again, another amazing indicator of, of our local economy, but the economy in general, is uh, how tight the, the rental real estate market is right now. Um, it's, it's really extreme. It's really, really extreme. Uh, we have a vacancy rate for apartments in San Diego County, and it averages, it, it went up to 4% last month because a couple of projects came online, but for the last previous months before that, the vacancy rate was running about 2.5%, okay? And the median cost of a, of a, a, a month's rent in this county, um, and it's, that means everything from a studio apartment to a three or four bedroom apartment, uh, was a little bit over $1,500 a month. Uh, nationwide, the vacancy rate is about 7%, and the average cost to rent an, apart an apartment in the United States is about $800. We're almost double the, the, the both of those numbers. We're, we have twice uh, lower uh, the number of vacancies and double the, the cost of rent. And rents are going to keep going up. Uh, it's a supply-demand market, and people that own apartments are in the driver's seat right now. So that's a, a, a very powerful sign. And one of the, I have a good friend in town who's an economist, and I don't have too many friends that are economists because they're boring people. Um, <laughs> um, I forget who it was said that economists were created to make astrologers look good. Uh, so, 
Uh, but he has this really interesting way of calculating things like, like I was just talking about, the, the tight rental market. And, and he said, he, he told me this about a year ago, he says, get ready, we're going to have a really, really tight market because the economy is at a point where all of those people that had moved back in with their parents are now moving out. They've got a better job, they can afford to live on their own now, and their parents have changed the locks and stuff like that. So uh, they really don't have a lot of choice. So they're moving out, and now we have a bigger number of people chasing a small supply of apartments. And so pff, economics 101, I mean, it's as, as simple as that supply demand. So, so that's a, a very interesting situation that we see kind of developing there.